In a referendum, they will have a number of alternatives to options to review before they make a decision on the ballot, so to speak. There'll be these four options before them. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Woolley, you want to comment on the, uh, the need for referendum or the request for referendum in Etria? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I believe there is no need for any referendum. The, the reason one wants to have a referendum is to know the wishes and aspirations of the Eritrean people. Now, the Eritrean people, through several processes from, from the end of the Second World War, had gone through the acts and different stages of self-determination. The 1947 Four Great Powers Conference decided to set up a commission of investigation, sent that committee or commission to Eritrea to investigate on what the people of Eritrea wanted to do. That commission came with a recommendation that the majority of people wanted to associate themselves with Ethiopia. But later on, the Four Power Great Commission's responsibility shifted from there to the United Nations. And the United Nations set up a United Nations Commission for Eritrea, which had five members of it, three of whom were violently opposed against uh, to the Ethiopian nation state, particularly Pakistan. That commission went to Addis Ababa, had ra attended rallies, went to churches, to synagogue, to mosques, visited schools and factories and decided at the end of the day the vast majority of the people of Ethiopia want either total association with Ethiopia or some form of federal association. The commission went back to the United Nations and drafted a federal constitution for Eritrea, which was approved by the people through the Eritrean Assembly. And the, therefore, the decision on whether to belong or be member of Ethiopia has already been taken by the people of Eritrea. One cannot give the right of self-determination every 15 years or 20 years or every generation. And, but if it is found necessary at some point in the future for the people of Eritrea to decide the future, well then, since there are so many developments since the Second World War, and the people of Ethiopia are affected in many ways through direct cultural, political, and economic interrelationship, that opportunity or that referendum should be made available, should be made open to the people of Ethiopia and so that the people of Ethiopia should decide. And more importantly, it should also be suggested the decision on whether one should have a referendum in Eritrea or the whole of Ethiopia should be preceded by the democratization of the political life of the people of Eritrea and Ethiopia. Because if a referendum were to be held today, now in Eritrea, it will be held under the totalitarian control of the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, which is a totalitarian organization with all the nomenclature of communist organizations elsewhere in Europe, in Eastern Europe. It had its cells and factories, in towns, in villages, and schools. And people will be forced, will be, will, will be forced, literally forced to vote for the referendum. There are some of us who cannot speak for unity of Ethiopia, even in this country. We are harassed, harassed. Is it possible for an Eritrean living in Eritrea under these conditions to vote of his own free will to join Ethiopia? And therefore, these are some of the considerations that have been taken into place, Your Excellency. Thank you very much.